Let's try recording our old time radio, wow, see? you really weren't full share there. I did. <laughs> It's either share or... or... (laughs) Like, I feel like he was going for, like, a Spencer Tracy, and Uh, we just got full on share. Exactly. Um, Snap out of it. Cheers! Cheers. Welcome Welcome to to Movie Movie Bitches. Bitches. Let's have a kiki with Movie Bitches. And welcoming our first guest, and the most fabulous, James Mansfield. Thank you for having me. I love that we're drinking waters. It's like a wine hangover Mm -hmm. cure. Oh, it is. Oh, we should have had coconut water out. Or Gatorade. Today we are talking about... Sunset Boulevard. Yes. Sunset Boulevard. Boulevard. It's Boulevard. Every time they said salami. Oh my gosh, she salami. said salami. I was like, salami? Story of salami. I think I'll have DeMille direct it. Salami? What are you talking about? Because it's salami. I say it? salami. But... Yeah. I think my favorite was the way she pronounces garage. The gay garage. The gay garage. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. There's a room over the garage. <laughs> there were a lot of fabulous moments of. Speech choices. Oh, yeah. Well, lots of hands. Oh, claws, really. <laughs> oh, her nails. Her nails. Oh, my God. The eye work, the nail work. I yeah. was getting a lot of Max Shrek, Nosferatu. Yeah, it's like Marlena uh-huh. Dietrich does Nosferatu. Right? <laughs> Nosferatu. <laughs> I was really like, where's the shadows? When is she going to start sucking his blood? Because I was watching the movie trying to figure out what category would we put this in? Is it drama? Is it camp? Is it whatever? I think it's a horror movie. Actually, you're not on the right topic because this actually falls in one of the very first examples of what is the psycho bitty genre. Right. Like whatever happened to Baby Jane, whatever happened to yeah. Aunt Alice, which actually is really current because they're reviving that genre now with oh, Greta, Greta and Maz yes. Helm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It did seem like, is this the start? This must have been the first one. This is the very first one, but yeah. the one that really kicked it off with was Baby what, Jane Baby later. Jane, right? Yeah, sure. Well, and that one's full camp where I feel like this one is... Playing with camp, you know? The lady's a little younger. I yeah. Think Norma Desmond's yeah. supposed to be in like her 50s or 40s. They say she's 50 at the end. Yeah. Oh. And yet everyone is like, you're uh, ancient. Exactly. They're like, you're, you're dead. 80 years old. <laughs> yeah. You know, you are the oldest person I've ever met. <laughs> Bear in mind, they're saying that to Marilyn Monroe at 28. Oh I know, God. right? <laughs> and yet Cecil B. DeMille was still working. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, as you know, if you're a curmudgeonly old white man, you'll have a very long career in it's Hollywood. It's true. It's true. <laughs> well, you know what was funny? I, after watching this, I had the thought, like, wouldn't it be kind of fun to remake this, but with, like, a Brian Singer... Um, oh, I thought you were going to say with music. It's like, they did that already, Andy. Yeah, it's, it's already the Broadway show. <laughs> no. With Glenn Close. Oh they did well, one too with Gloria um, Swanson. Betty Buckley first, right? No, Gloria Swanson did the very oh, first they one. They wanted to, yeah, that's right. It was called, I, I remember it didn't. It never got off Broadway, and she had fabulous numbers like, words, words, words. What? But that was, that's not the Andrew Lloyd Webber one. That's, oh, no. They did the new one then. Gloria yeah. was dead and gone by that's the time true, that that's happened. That's <laughs> But I was saying with like a gay, kind of like an interesting. So like Gods and Monsters. Sure. Have you seen Gods and Monsters? No. I've never seen that, no. no. So it's, uh, I think it's Ian McKellen and Brendan Fraser, and it's like he, uh, Ian McKellen plays the director of all these universal horror movies, and oh. then he sort of, you know, is like, come live in my pool house, and <laughs> and it gets a little, yeah. He becomes a kept man. A little bit, yeah. Interesting, I think yeah. the closest gay equivalent to that would probably be under the, cam- uh, the candle, behind the candelabra. Oh, sure. Totally. Yes, 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 Only yes. real life. Actually, that's pretty... Behind the organ. That's pretty Instead uh, of the piano, similar. it's the organ. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Many organs. <laughs> The wind gets in that blasted pipe organ I ought to have it taken out. Oh, yes. Coming I really the loved the, um, the ring. Oh, her cigarette, cigarette ring? Yes. <laughs> just, and, then, and then she's just like clawing at herself. It's like she, really... She is a vampire. I'm like, I'm putting it out there. I mean, yeah, it's full on like Nosferatu who meets yeah. like roadkill animal. Yes. Like rigor mortis. And she's got just leopard print everywhere. Oh my just, God, Rrr. everywhere. You know what I was thinking? Why has no one done her for Snatch Game? Ooh. I feel like all the jokes are there, and even if you have to like borrow from Carol Burnett, yeah. That here's the thing: Gloria Swanson on her own was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, she was an amazing person. Like, there's interviews of her on Dick Cavett with Janis Joplin talking about hanging out with transsexuals in Berlin in the 20s. Like, she lived a fabulous life. I mean, you imagine 
her mansion in this, like the opulence of the 20s and 30s of the Hollywood era. I was like, oh my God, I wish I was there. It's I know. so fabulous. It's always my favorite era. I feel like if I were to like be reborn in a different time, I would want to be in the 20s. In like the golden age Hollywood 20s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes and no. Well, sure. It depends on the scenario. I mean, to be what a gay man presented. in the golden age of Hollywood 20s, you'd probably be well off. Being a woman wasn't so great. No. <laughs> Especially Gloria. This was considered her comeback role, which actually kind of was the final nail in the coffin for her career. Excuse you. I hate that word. It's a return. It's a return. <laughs> I didn't know you were planning a comeback. I hate that word. It's a return. A return to the millions of people who've never forgiven me for deserting the screen. Gloria was basically blackballed after Queen Kelly, the movie right. they're watching in yeah. the theater, is oh. the one that killed her career because it was such a huge bomb. And she never made the transition over to speakies. Well, she had such a hard time with the Hayes Code, apparently, because she was always trying to push it and do more interesting things and all of that. And so when that started to crack down, she was kind of like, you know, the party's over. Yeah, she purposely would seek out, like, bad girl roles or roles that were not you know, lots, necessarily lots of prostitutes. Yes, yeah, Sadie Thompson. <laughs> yeah, which was later remade by Joan Crawford as Rain. Oh. That's right. I forgot about that. If you ever watch Sadie Thompson, it is amazing that it's like a prostitute basically being harassed by a preacher, and just the way Gloria Swanson walks around like a truck driver throughout the whole thing. <laughs> Like, just that's, I guess, how bad girls walk back in the day. Oh, yeah. Plus of All shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the meta-ness of it all, that she was a silent film star, and then now she's playing an you know, aging silent film star, and worked with DeMille, and now they're working with DeMille again, and the guy who plays Max was a, Eric von Stroheim was a director of silent mm. movies, actually, yeah. and then in the movie is playing a director of silent movies, and he directed Oof. Queen Kelly. Oh, my God. It's all there. It's all yeah. swirling around. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that that crazy? That's like, um, meta before meta. Depressing? I don't know. (laughs) You know? The word we're looking for. At a certain point, I realized, like, this movie is fabulous and she's everything. Everything. But also, I'm just like, oh, God, these aged, aged starlet uh, tragedies are just so. Relevant? Depressing. Relevant? Well, and, and relevant. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like, um, how it's just continually cycling. Yeah. Like the fact that they've been able to make four versions of frickin' Star is Born and right. every time you're just like, oh, and then Oh yeah, that's right. The story's into... not very good. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> oh, it kind of falls Thank you. apart. Oh. Oh. I guess the beginning is the best part and then the end is like, okay. Yep. So, <laughs> so how yet? does he die? Yeah. <laughs> How's he going to kill himself? <laughs> oh, God. We haven't talked about the opening, which I think is one of the most parodied, referenced. I mean, the movie has almost become famous for being famous at this point. Yeah. Mm. How many people have actually seen the movie? Really? They, they know the references, They know the, sure. I'm ready for my close-ups. Yes. The pictures got small. You know, it's mm. the pictures and him floating in the pool. It was funny because it starts off, for me, kind of slow. Mm. You know, and it's like this real noir, like, you know, voiceover. And at a certain point, I realized it was when he was describing the house. Mm. And he's going into this, like, five-minute dissertation about the goddamn house, and it was as if the blah. I was like, oh, the voiceover is like a bad writer. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's a hack. He's not a good writer. Like, they established that in the very beginning. Like, Betty Schaefer, like, reads him to film. Oh, yes, I love it. It's terrible. It's bad. You're a terrible writer. It was just a rehash of something that wasn't very good to begin with. (laughs) It's states of desperation. Like, (laughs) shit. When you think about it, all of his voiceover, like, even in death, even beyond the grave, his writing is bad, right? Oh, yeah. Because technically, I guess he's... Telling this from the grave. In purgatory. Yeah, Yeah. he's like proto This is the original Desperate Housewives. Right, exactly. Straight up, yes. (laughs) Because when you see his dead body, you know, you know he's dead. And so... Is as a narrator, is he reliable? What's he? You know, it's all his perspective. Of sure. course, he's bitter and making all these cracks oh, that Norma yeah. does. Yeah, she fucking killed him. Yeah. We don't know that yet, but like, of course, he's a dick to her. That's fair, right? I guess we should talk about Billy Wilder, right? Yeah. At this point, he'd already done Double Indemnity and Last Weekend, his more depressing noir kind of movies, but he hadn't done Some Like It Hot, Apartment, all of those. Uh, 70 Rich, which was with a different writing partner. Mm. And apparently, uh, you'll find this interesting, apparently Billy Wilder was asked to direct Some Like It Hot uh-huh. and Cabaret. Oh. Turn them both down. I mean, are we really mad about what we got with Cabaret? <laughs> I know. I oh, like, no. oh, no. I feel like we're good with I that I feel one. like it worked out. But that's just sort <laughs> of interesting. Those are his two favorite movies. That's why. Oh. Well, a Cabaret is my favorite movie. Some Like It Hot is your favorite movie. Did I say Some Like It Hot? Yeah. But then I was confused because... I messed it up, guys. It's not something good because he did direct. It. That's I was very I was waiting for like, Whoa. but then he ended up doing it. I was Whoa. waiting for it. To... <laughs> so, sound of music. 
he That's turned the it down. I was looking wow, for. Yeah. he turned down sound of music and cabaret, yeah. which are in fact two of <laughs> my favorite, favorite movies. movies. Very Nazi theme with you, I see. I yeah. so weird. Nazi. Well, that's Billy Wilder's joke that he would have just made the movie about the Nazis. <laughs> like his parents are all were like killed in the Holocaust. All this. Oh. He was like, I have way too much baggage. It's with sure. it. Yeah. it was too much. No, it's fine. It was too much baggage with it. So he was like, I, it's, I'll, Interesting. I'll make the wrong story. Yeah. The original choices for Norma Desmond and the woman that turned it down. Oh my god. The right? one he really wanted was Mae West. Right. It would have been horrible. Oh, I don't a know. It would have been very different. So apparently she read the script and said, well, why is this sad or a fantasy? Of course I would have a younger lover and be amazing. Like yeah. She was like, I don't understand the plot, the tone. What are you talking about? I <laughs> love it. Because Mae West in her mind was so, like, Mae I, West was, every one of her movies, Mae West is just feeling her oats. Oh, yeah. Like, for an hour. It's all it is. Have, have you seen? Have been believable? There's like a whole thing about Mae West and Raquel Welsh. How did we stumble yeah. upon that? I have I seen it? You didn't see that? No. I know the backstory on okay. that. Okay, tell us, it, tell us. They were in the film Myra Breckenridge together, yeah, which is right. a Gore Vidal novel yeah. that was turned into a horrible movie. Horrible. Based off a horrible book, but like <laughs> that's really problematic. But no, they were cast in that. And Mae West and Raquel Welch were going back and forth on set fighting because they just were divas and apparently they had things like written in their contract like Mae West could only appear in color and Raquel Welch had to wear nothing but black and white. They could not be in the same frame with each other. It was like crazy. Oh, it's making a lot more sense. I yeah. thought we watched this together. Mm. I must have, I like stumbled upon it on YouTube and there's like this weird like mashup of all of the clips of the two of them talking about it and Mae West just being like, oh, well, it's great. It's fun. I love that she refused to learn her name. She always called her Rochelle Walsh. <laughs> I think that should be the next season of Feud. Oh, that would be May good. May Raquel. I was going to say I like that as a drag name. Rochelle Welsh. Rochelle Welsh. Rochelle Welsh. Welsh. I <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, can Ryan Murphy not be in charge of that season? I would love that. Is, that. is that something that can happen? Even better, like do the feud on W.C. Fields and Mae West making My Little Chickadee. Oh my God. Well, and Mary Pickford was the other option. Oh. And they gave her the script and so they were like, oh wait, you're America's Sweetheart, we can't. Like, this this isn't going to work at all, uh, at all, at all. So they didn't give it to her either. Oh, well, I mean, I think what they wound up with was... I think it's bad. Gloria Swanson was probably the best choice. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because she hammed it up. She was willing. Because oh this wasn't she? her life. You know, a lot of people confuse her with Norma Desmond, but she was, like, living it up, being fabulous, not sad at all. I think she really got to play with that and live in that, where I think if they had gotten, like, a Greta Garbo, she would have been all self-conscious about, like, oh, this is my life, you know? Ah, you know? <laughs> right. Does it Gloria Swanson was enough where she's a month of a ham to where she eats up every scene, but it never gets to the point where it's just, like, you laugh. No. You still can get creeped out by her. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a monster movie. Hollywood's the monster. Right? Yeah. Sure. They created yes, her, they cre and yes. she is now a vampirus. I'm really into it, guys. I'm really into and it. And she's an aging drag queen, which oh is what God. I love. That's like, yes. she is full-on drag queen with, like, the way she, like, reflects on herself and refuses to live in her own reality. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or even reflect in it. Well, and her drag king, her chaplain impersonation. Oh, yes. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> it was fabulous. Loved I'm going to be my bathing beauty. Don't <laughs> you love it? Oh, God. <laughs> But I wasn't happy. <laughs> oh my god. Can we talk about him? Should we talk about William Holden? Yeah. Oh my god. I wrote down in my notes fuckboy energy. Oh, yes. William yes. Holden. When he got out of the time. pool, I was like, okay, hey. But that's the only time. Turn around, darling. Let me dry you. The rest of the movie, I was just like, oh. Well, he's such a little nagging closet case the entire time. Like, she's so catty. Do we think him and Max are fucking? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I think Max hasn't touched himself in a long, long time and just like whips even, himself even to himself. feel anything. Ooh, That's what no. I get from Max. I like that idea. And I think he has a room. I think so. <gasps> well, Do you remember? think his back is just full of high heel imprints? Yes. Well, because remember when he's talking about their uh, dressing rooms and how oh, hers was the entire floor and mine was above hers and it was all patent oh. leather wallpaper or something yeah. weird? He yes. said the whole walls were covered in black patent leather. I remember my walls were covered with black patent leather. Yes. And I was just trying like, to what even does imagine. That mean? How do you? I guess you could just wipe it constantly. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to. His you would have to. But no, he definitely has a playroom in that house. Oh yeah. Like there are lots of really weird kinky references in there. Like I think he mentioned one about Maharaja strangling himself with her stockings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's this little 
things if you pay attention to that you pick up and go, oh my god, that got into this movie in 1950? And mm. Billy Wilder was always really good at like skirting around the Hayes Code, but apparently, I was reading about it, because we haven't talked about the monkey. Oh, yeah. Yes, the monkey. <laughs> and apparently, whether or not it was Billy Wilder fucking with people, or it was true, or it was a joke that he thought, he, in his mind, Gloria was fucking the monkey. He repeatedly, on numerous occasions, said that that was Flubber before Wait, Joe showed up. Not like that Norma. Yes. Obviously. Just I'm to sorry. clarify. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> the character of Norma Desmond yes. was yeah. fucking that monkey. Apparently. Just thought we should clarify. <laughs> just thought we should clarify. No, 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 no. Not a rumor behind the scenes on set. Excuse me. Uh, here I just thought it was a coded at sexcentricity yeah. of her. No. Yeah. Because Mae West had a monkey. And they always told Joan Collins wrote stories in her books about how like the monkey would shit everywhere when she went to go visit her like part was so filthy. Oh my god. god. So he his directorial choice Apparently was that during she was... the scene he said, Now this is your lover, so you should be really upset because this is your lover, this monkey. I mean we certainly got that. I want the coffin to be white and I want it specially lined with satin. Mm. Maybe they just cuddled in her gigantic Bed. Slave, bed, bed. her that, her boat, like her, oh. was she gonna be like <laughs> forded across the Nile to like the underworld right? in this boat? It was the so river weird. Sticks, yes, she's the river river <laughs> to hell. I don't know. I hope so. Yes, <laughs> it's like just the pure measurements of this house is just like amazing. Me, like it doesn't look like it would actually logistically work at all. No, no. It's like <laughs> why is her room the size of a football field? Right, <laughs> and his room right next door is also. Yeah. Oh, this is the husband's room. Oh. <gasps> Her and third that, husband. That reveal. Oh, I know, right? Max was her husband. Her first husband. Yeah. What sort of power do we think she has? Because she seemed to have a power over Max. She seemed to have a power over Cecil B. DeMille. Mm-hmm. You know, he easily could have been an asshole to her. But no, we can't. Norma, you know. I mean. She was the one. She must have been star. crazy from the gut. Well, I, right? think, I think that and fragile. Like I mean, because they all just kind of, I think, seem to have this guilt. I think it's just this, like. That they broke her. Powerful male guilt of, like, we created her and now she's broken and, like, we have to keep her from actually shattering. Right, because that would affect us too much. Like, if, sure. if it would make us look admit, bad. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think they seem to earnestly care for her. Yeah. About her, I mean, yeah. in, in a sense, like some Demille was straight up, just you know, just cut the tie. Sure, no, <laughs> which I thought was amazing that they kept that in. Like he agreed to do that. I know he came off like such a dick. I mean, I guess he was playing a character, although he was playing himself. It's all very meta. Yeah, it's all. I mean, we get Buster Keaton playing himself in the bridge game. Pass, yes. pass. pass. Oh. <laughs> pass. That legendary like look they give him, when, oh, like the, like oh, the, the kept man is asking for money again. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And then Hedda Hopper at the end playing herself. Yeah. yeah. All of it's just really, really interesting that it was so meta before anyone was talking about being meta. We haven't talked about Edith Head. Oh, oh yeah. yes. We have to talk. <laughs> we have to. We simply she have gives to. good gown. Yeah. Can we talk about the Vicuña? <laughs> because I want that coat. Well, as long as the lady's paying for it, why not take the Vicuña? <laughs> well, she's basically wearing Edith Head glasses when we see her for the first time. Oh, in sure. the blind. Oh, oh yes. Just, the... Who's there? Yeah. You know, it was so fabulous. Apparently, Gloria and her worked really closely together to have a sense of she had really expensive clothes, but they were out of date. Mm. So they still seemed like they were from the past. I like that. Even though they were very opulent yes. and expensive. Yes. Yeah, like they're just stored away. Like they, like you can tell, yeah. you can smell the mothballs on oh, them. Oh, you could smell that house. Can we talk about the shoulders on his tuxedo? Oh, boy. On those tails. They were... And she's, I love the shoulders, the, the shape. Oh, yes. And he's like, it's just padding. I don't just, care. I don't care. I love it. It's like, almost like a zoot suit, like the saddle shoulders. It was yeah. crazy. It was the camel coat. My favorite is when she's dancing in the tango with him, and she just rips off that headpiece, and oh, her hair is all jacked up. Oh, my God, right? It's <gasps> just the diamonds. She just tosses the diamond <laughs> Whatever you want, anything for you. Yeah. And her sort of sad monologue to herself when he's asleep, and she comes, oh, Joe. Joe, are you cheating on me? Is it another oh, woman? Yeah, she has like this weird, like, morphium induced sort of like Catherine Hepburn in Long Day's Journey and Tonight, just like wandering the halls of her, <laughs> her bitch. Joe, is it you? Oh my god, all the hands, all the face. Joe, where were you? Is it a woman? The lighting in this film is also really great. Like, there's a great shot of him when he like looks at the doorknob. And you see the doorknobs cut out and mm-hmm. the light just peeking through yeah. it. Yes. Oh, gorgeous. Now here's a theory. Uh huh. What if? Max was poisoning her. 
poisoning her? Mm-hmm. With what? With what? I don't know, something to make her crazy. Like, what if, like, Lead after poisoning? the divorce, he was just like, fuck you, bitch, and then he was, like, constantly just, like, long con, Trying to steal just her money. making her crazy to get back at her for leaving like him for another man. Mercury poisoning or something. He also has a felt room where he makes hats. Exactly. And a leather room. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It's like, one thing they're never really too clear on is, like, what caused the end of her career? Mm. Like, we never, like, got any hints of, like, did she just refuse to talk? Or right. what was right. What was the thing that caused this? Right, because it's not like Sound of Music where they're like, oh, and then you heard her talk and you were like, oh, never mind. You mean singing in the rain. Yeah, that's, yes, <laughs> you knew exactly what it meant. I knew exactly what you meant. And I can't stand them. Can't. 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 There's a line, Cecil B. DeMille says something like, or his assistant director is like, Oh, wasn't she such a pain to work with? And only he's like, in the end. Only in the end. So I guess maybe she just became more and more demanding. Or... Again, because of the, the drugs that Max was giving her. <laughs> I, I'm, let's get into Max. I'm enjoying this. Yes. I mean, he's like this weird, unknown, controlling yeah. character. Where he's in, in many ways presented as her servant, and yet he's in charge. Mm, and he's, you know, writing with the fan holding mail. Holding information. Mm-hmm. I want to know more about Max. I think we're getting into it. I think he has numerous rooms where yeah. numerous activities happen <laughs> in this dilapidated mansion. We never saw the cellar, so there's lots to unpack. That is oh, true. The bowling alley in the cellar. That's what true. a missed opportunity for a weird <sighs> scene. Oh my gosh, when when he first gets there, when Joe first gets there, he's got the flat tire and he's stuck and he's like, I gotta get out of here. And, and they just have caviar and champagne on hand. Just, even though no one's probably been there for 10 years or what, you know, well, he who's the there's, visitor? There's always champagne on ice. Always. But I just love that that... Well, my caviar doesn't stay good. No. And I'm sure that champagne is burned. Oh, my God. Oh, the champagne is burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Max wheeled in some champagne and some caviar. Later, I found out that Max was the only other person in that grim sunset castle. Well, and Max did seem to have superpowers of like, oh, I brought all your stuff over, even though... I guess we just found out where you live. I mean, I guess maybe his registration from the car and, or I mean, like, he, like a lot of he just looked like, at his license. And then he just knew. Would you yeah. be surprised he's like in the backseat of the car with gloves on just digging through information? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but also like, oh, I made the bet up this afternoon. Because, yeah, because I knew. Because he knows. Because how many times has it happened? Or... Ooh, now that's interesting. Who's in that cellar? Oh. It's like an arsenic and old lace. Sure. I like that. Mm-hmm. It's just always ready for somebody to show up so she can wow, get her okay. nails on him. Yeah, but like this time line. it went too far. This time it went, she fell in love for real. <laughs> <laughs> I did love that. So it opens with the pool shot. He's flowing, you know, he's describing his death. Oh, it's shot twice in the back, once in the gut. No blood. Thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank Not you. a drop. I was like, um, why is this pool so blue? Like, what's happening? I mean, it would have ruined the, you know, they had to shoot that shot where you see him from underneath the water, like in a mirror and mm. oh, this whole wow. thing because you couldn't show it underwater sure. and all of that. And I wasn't aware of the code. I don't know if you're allowed to show blood just yet. I bet that's why. I'm sure. For sure. And when he gets shot, I love it. She shoots him in the back and he seems to not notice. I, I thought Powers she through. missed that time. No, because he, he kind of goes, oh. He does kind of jump uh, and, and then he keeps, keeps walking. walking <laughs> and then she shoots again and then it's like, oh it's, no, a stumble. The, the, yeah. the power of I got a GTFO, honestly. I know that I have to die in Book this it. pool. So in the- I'm really going to just, <laughs> I got to get there. He was taking a shortcut. Yeah, it you did mean. really re- reminiscent of the letter, like with Betty Davis yeah, shooting was, him on the stairs and just like, ah, it's crazy. It was good. It reminded me of that. Cool. I haven't seen the letter. You should watch it. It's good. Although, I think there's some pretty aggressive yellow face racism oh, no. in that one. Yeah. In old Hollywood? No. <laughs> it's not as if someone won an Oscar for being in yellow face either. <laughs> oh, Twice. Mickey Rooney, I'm looking at you. Oh. <laughs> You're living dangerously. Oh, boy. Oh. Esther. Oh, my God. Oh, or The Good Earth. Oh, my God. <laughs> Catherine Hepburn. Oh, Wow. It was a different time. It was a different time. They were signed a contract. She wasn't a free player. <laughs> Should we talk about Double Indemnity since you brought it up? Um, I always, always want to talk about I it. I love that movie. Billy Wilder probably has the best noir, Double Indemnity. Probably has the best courtroom drama, witness for the prosecution, comedy, some like it hot. You know, he's got a staple of each genre. So I'm glad that this one kind of fits into... I don't know, horror, exploitation. What are we? What are we calling it? Would it would be more on the horror side, I imagine. Yeah. Just the way it's shot and the tone of it all. Yeah. yeah. Like a horror comedy. A horror comedy camp. Camp. Camp classic. I mean, hag exploitation. I think hag. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. The psycho baby. No, no, but like, is the word hag exploitation a thing? That was like the 
on PC way of putting it. I guess right. Psycho Bitty's not better either. <laughs> always with Billy Wilder films, there's always a sense of he's getting away with something. And this oh, one, yeah. he really pissed off a lot of people in Hollywood. Oh my gosh. Can you, I mean, can you imagine? They there's shot so many the similar Paramount stories. Lot. Like, yeah. the amount of things he got away with. It's crazy. I'm curious, did this predate Frances Farmer? Because her story is somewhat similar it in the way similar. she was driven out. I think it crazy. might. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's only become more relevant, the whole story of, obviously, the aging actress not being able to get work, all of this stuff. <gasps> what about her beauty regimen, which is just 100% death becomes her? Oh, yeah. The triangles? Oh, my God. On her face and the neck? Speaking <laughs> of, oh, my God. Th- I caught this reference as I was watching it this morning. He met, like, Betty Schaefer mentions to him one of his scripts, Dark Windows. Just so you don't think I'm a complete swine, if there's anything in Dark Windows you can use, take it, it's all yours. And that's the movie Meryl Streep is in. Oh my god, that's the concert. And I was like, oh my god, all of it's coming together. I love I mean, there's it. so many references. But like, literally, she literally has the same mask on with I, the triangles and the. I, mean, I love it. I mean, Death Becomes Her fully gets it. That was well, also like art imitating life because Gloria Swanson was known for that old Hollywood routine where she would have surgical clamps pulling back her face right. when she did interviews. That's why she always wore like bangs and wigs that cut the face. Drag queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The full on mask with the wires in the back. And we had to look like Gloria Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> a turban? <laughs> they put me in a turban, Ross. <laughs> David, David, David! <laughs> David, 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 David! I don't feel quite right in a turban. Uh, okay. What I feel like is Gloria fucking Swanson! All of those old photographs of Gloria Swanson. Oh my god. Surrounding Gloria Swanson as Norma Desmond. It's great. <laughs> Everywhere and they're around me and my nails and oh, it was and there's so more good. of her here and just, oh, it worked out so well for them because at one point she was one of the most photographed women in the world right mm. so it, they just had so much to work with with her they're like that's why she was so much better because Mary Pickford and other women especially Garbo they're more yeah. reclusive so there's just so much more to unpack with Gloria because mm-hmm. of her legacy and her all of her background it just worked so well and gelled as Norma Desmond completely her eyes something about. Is she wearing lashes? What is going on? Is that just her eyes? Like, she has... It's very interesting. What is... I mean, obviously, she's a silent film star, but just... I couldn't stop staring at her eyes. I'm convinced they must have plucked her eyebrows out, like, intensely, just to get that huge, yeah. like, round yeah. crease. But yeah. she seemed to only have, like, a like a, a lash on the end, Well, somehow. as she said, she can say anything with her eyes. It's true. It was very true. Well, and it's also interesting, the year this movie came out is after the Hays Code's been going for a while, and it's kind of just after the Hollywood 10 House on American Activities thing was all happening mm. uh, with the McCarthy hearing. So mm-hmm. it's all this sort of taking down of Hollywood and we're all backstabbing each other and who can you trust and all of that. So that's sort of interesting too. I think that might have been inspiration for them writing about it. It also had the misfortune of being released amongst another juggernaut movie about, ho- about the show business, All About Eve. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, that was its hugest competition for Best Picture and also really what created another controversial Oscar win for an actress. Oh, for Judy Holiday. Reflecting today this yeah. today now, yes. Judy Holiday winning for a comedy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Fabulous. I mean, I love that someone's winning for a comedy, but it is insane that she beat out I mean, Betty that, Davis and Gloria Swanson. Who both crazy. had made enemies and no one was voting for them, no matter how good <laughs> their performance was. <laughs> And then Joan Crawford got up and accepted it for her. Oh my God. If only. I said, sit down. <laughs> she has so many down. I said, sit down. I just, her car. Can we talk about her car? Oh my God. I mean, it just seems fabulous. You and, and Gary Cooper or whatever from Paramount. What was his name? It was not Gary Cooper, but something with a G. Maybe. Something Glenn? Like no. Somebody named uh, Gordon Cole. Anyway. I just remember the sound, the light guy's name was Hog Eye. That always stuck out in my what? mind. It's me, Hog Eye. What, what, what was his name? It's Hog Eye. It was hard to hear. Hog Eye. I didn't know if it was like Hawk Eye because he was always up in the rafters. That was his nickname. Maybe he pronounced it weird. It sounded or was like it Hog Eye? Hog Eye. Hog Eye. I, I didn't know. I was like, what is this name? It's Hog Eye. Oh, this scene. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. Where DeMille just tells them all to get the hell away from her. Yeah, that's enough. Oh, that's I enough. Know. Get out of here. Get oh, out of yeah. Here. Let's put that light back where it belongs. To then reveal his directing jodhpurs. Excited oh. about that. And did you see those boots? Right? <laughs> Choices. It is definitely a full-on choice, girl. When were you born? <laughs> hmm? When were you born? <laughs> oh. What month? Sagittarius. I like Sagittarians. You can trust them. A Sagittarius. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. You can, you can trust Sagittarius. 
<gasps> oh, that whole astrology thing. Demilla is Leo. I'm Scorpio. Mars have been transiting Jupiter for weeks. Today is the day of the greatest conjunction. This also reminded me a lot of like Great Gardens. Oh, yeah. Numerology and that kind of spiritual. And just like has beens and performances. Dilapidated and, like, mansions. Exactly. Not as many cats. I was gonna say there weren't as many. I mean, the monkey probably kept them at bay. The not the cat. rats, though. Not the rats. Not oh, no, the rats, rats, though. Oh my god, his reaction to the rats in the pool is so much. <laughs> well, yeah, William Holden is. Uh... He's a bit of a Carrie in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> but he's no Cary Grant. Oh, okay. he's a Carrie Bradshaw. That <laughs> writes over. Right. I'm such a good writer. Let's hear. Everyone wants to hear every single thought I have. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were sitting on the couch and she had this and, blah, blah, and I was wearing green. Girl, let me tell you about her decor. <laughs> right? Oh my god. It really was a lot. We haven't really talked about Betty Shaver. I feel like we should. Oh yeah. Because her story. I mean, she wins the reading challenge every oh single god. time. Every time. Dark windows. How'd you like it? Oh, I didn't. Thank you. Except for about six pages. It's terrible. Well, there was uh, six pages or so that were okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gillis, but I just didn't think it was any good. I found it flat and trite. The nice line in the beginning you know? where um, the um, producer tells him the, the picture ball? might work as a baseball <laughs> picture oh. with Betty Hutton. <laughs> like, I would watch the fuck a out of that. A picture. <laughs> if we made it a girl softball team, put in a few numbers, might make a cute musical. It happened in the bullpen. The story of a woman. It happened in the bullpen. A woman's story. <laughs> we'll have a musical number. Oh I was like, but where's that movie? Because I want it. Yeah. I would be obsessed with that. Yeah. It's like a proto League of Their Own. Exactly. I want to see this. It's like, take, exactly. take me out to the ball game in League of Their Own, and I love it. And yeah. I watch it. But her whole story of when we find out her backstory of, oh yeah, I grew up in Hollywood, and basically from birth was like groomed to be a starlet, and took dictation and this and da, 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 yeah. da. and that's why she always seems so like performative I feel like you know because mm. she's like putting on this act of that she had to get her nose fixed and all this stuff and then well then they didn't even like how I was acting dramatic lessons diction dancing they didn't like my nose so I went to a doctor and had it fixed they made more tests and they were crazy about my nose only they didn't like my acting so I just decided to forge to... my own path yeah can we talk about their flirting after 12 years in the Burmese jungle I'm starving Lady Agatha Philip, your mom. Because it was weird. Well, they go full, you know, I don't know, line in winter. They start reading lines to each other. They yeah. Start, so the, oh, yeah. We, we both know the lines to this play that we're putting on. I, it was so weird. It's like very bad improv, but like they were full on, just like committed to this Shakespearean The retort. phone is ready for you. I'll miss you while I'm gone. Suddenly I find myself terribly afraid of losing you. You won't. I'll get us a refill of this horrible liquid. In happening? the rainbow room. It's like, this is room. how writers talk to each other, April. <laughs> Where's the phone? Over by the rainbow room. Why is it called the rainbow room? The bathroom? Is that a thing? They go in and sit on movie. the shower. Right. They keep saying, oh, it's in the rainbow room. Well, because right? already called it the rainbow room. But, like, is that a thing? I think it was a joke. Maybe it was well, like, a rainbow room maybe is a joke like a writer's like... room or something, I thought. There's something about the rainbow like that's a thing well it's you know in new york yes okay there's like a rainbow room yeah it's not a bathroom well i think he was referring to different places in the house as different things i guess but he said so then he was he like said, where's the phone it's next to the rainbow room and then they're like shall we just go in the rainbow room and they go and sit in the shower <laughs> but like the way they were saying rainbow room was not like it was a normal thing was it's it like because they're rainbow? creative guys yeah they're exactly. creative writers exactly no philip no we must be strong you're still wearing the uniform of the Coldstream Guards. Furthermore, you can have the phone now. Is it coded for gay? I don't think so. Was this Betty a beard? Oh my god. I mean, <sighs> she was pretty ready to dump Artie right away. Right they, like, away? They almost kiss at In the, the party. bathroom. There's just too much chemistry. Evil. She was too inspiring to him. I mean, they were, it wasn't really sexual between them. It was creative. It was, she was spurring him on. She was insulting him. She was, you know, challenging mm -hmm. him with writing and all that stuff. So, so she negged was, him and then he was hooked. Exactly. I was waiting for, like, her, because she gets a phone call when he wants her to move Artie's to Arizona like, or whatever. Well, come get married. Yeah, in come get married in Arizona. I was waiting for it to be like, oh, my mom got fired from her job, and it's because like Norma Desmond called in like a favor. Oh my like, god! Oh, I was ready for oh, that. Like, yeah. I thought you were gonna say secretly Norma was her mom. Oh well, that would be. <laughs> Which. I love that. Yes. Oh, my mother groomed me to be an actress because she was one. Oh my god. Second generation, huh? Third, Grandma did stunt work for Pearl White. I come from a picture family. Yeah. It would have been full Grey Gardens. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. 
I like it. When they go to the store and get them all those clothes and that salesman is just like, she's paying for the bill anyway, so why don't you just live it up and get this one? Get the vacunia. Get the vacunia. Oh, John John Waters hawking the suit at him. I loved it. Well, as long as the lady's paying for it, why not take the vacuum? Also, I loved that vacunia coat. You really liked it. You really wanted it. I do. I actually looked it up and um, oh, apparently... Oh, you really did want it. Well, I mean, like, I didn't look up the that specific, but, like, Vicuña is, like, higher than alpaca and cashmere. And apparently a coat like that now costs, like, $25,000. What? Because she's got oil down in Orange County. What was it? Oil, thing. oil thing. in Bakersfield. A building here. Buildings downtown, oil in Bakersfield. Her oil painting projection room it was giving me hearst castle it was giving me mm, citizen kane yes this yes house uh-huh, well, if uh-huh. you need a few more taxidermy animals i think yeah that would have fit i liked that it wasn't about it was about her oh yes everything everything's her it was a shrine her. she yeah. lived in a shrine to herself mm-hmm. the, the floor that valentino danced on this floor used to be wood but i had it changed Valentino said there's nothing like tile for a tango. I was like, oh, I wish they'd kept the hardwood floors. You know, Valentino tells you to do something, you gotta do it. I guess so. And these ceilings from Portugal. I mean, I was into all the like... How old could Valentino have been? When? In this movie. Well, I think he he was was dead by then. (laughs) He died early. He died very early. Oh, did he? In his 20s, yeah. yeah. He had like a crazy heart attack. Remember everyone killed themselves? Not everyone. A lot, like, women, like, killed themselves because they were so distraught that he had died. No. He died early, like, in his 20s, I want to say. Late 20s or something. Why do I not remember this? Didn't I see that movie? Which movie? Are you confused? I think maybe. (laughs) Who are we talking about? Who was playing him? Rudolph Valentino, heartthrob, the chic of silent movie era. Who are you thinking? Valentino. Clothing designer. Oh my god, that's me! Wait, what? I thought it was about Valentino. But I was like, how old could he have been? Obsessed with this. (laughs) Wouldn't Valentino tell you to fucking put a black tile floor on your house? Yes, it just made sense. No, oh, no, I guess not. It wasn't cool. Mm-mm. Makes Maybe. sense. Silent film star Rudolph Great. Valentino makes a lot more sense. I'm obsessed. If someone says Valentino to me, my head just goes to the fashion, fashion Valentino. Mm-hmm. And then they were talking about floors and interior design. It just made sense. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> One of my other favorite things was so because she says everybody wants to see me when yeah. he like tosses out the, the, scene, the scene in of the, the slave the... market scene or something. Put it yeah. back. Put it back. Yeah. <laughs> But then by the end, I was like, you know what? She was right. Everyone does want to see her. Yeah, nobody remembers Joe Gillis. No. I was like, I want more. Like, every scene that she wasn't in, I was like, where is she? What I want to see is, like, the off, off, off Broadway in her prison cell, like, you know, putting on the Salome. Oh, my God. God. (laughs) Her encyclopedia Yes. Yes. (laughs) Directing it. Max is coming to visit her. Because we haven't talked about the final scene. I mean, oh my the God. infamous, I think it's like number five on the most quoted. I'm sure. Something Hollywood quotes list. She's gone full crazy at this point. Or she's, has she? Well, what do you think? Is her, you think she's pretending to be? She's an actress. But why would that help her? So she can get off on Claim an insanity. insanity. Claim insanity. I mean, I think she did have a moment of insanity. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not saying that she didn't, but you never know. She had a full mental breakdown. Or did she? This is as deep as Hamlet. <laughs> Norma, you're a woman of 50. Now grow up. It was always so unclear yeah. because you, it could go many different ways as far as this like goes. Like They could completely rewrite the narrative of him to the press Oh yeah, and paint an ugly mm-hmm. picture of him. As of a, course. You know, a hustler. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was stealing her money. Yeah, no one knew anything about him. I mean, the only people that knew anything about him were... Betty. Betty. She'd probably get to come back and live in her house, right? <gasps> because she's insane. And rich. This permanent shit, house right? arrest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just give her an ankle bracelet. Exactly. But it'll be like a fabulous They didn't one. have ankle bracelets, but yes. Who's to say? Who's to say? Even better. A Valentino ankle bracelet? Yes! Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Coming down the stairs. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about it. Because apparently she had to wear platforms, or didn't have to, but did wear huge platforms the whole oh. movie. You can see them in one scene where she comes in, Joe, don't look at me. Mm. In my, you know, death becomes her, you know, nighttime routine. Uh, but she wanted to be able to, like, walk down the stairs and, like, stare right at the camera. And so she's barefoot, just, like, slinking down these stairs past all these frozen photographers. I know. It's so I good. mean, it's a really spectacular scene. I was really into her sequined wrap with the detail. I was into it. Yeah. This style of scene where, like, the very long stare off at the camera, they have... It's one of those scenes often imitated and duplicated, like, 
in whatever happened to the one with Debbie Reynolds and Shelley Winters. Oh, what's, what's the matter, matter with Helen? Helen? The mm-hmm. ending of that is very oh. similar with Shelley Winters just pounding away, just staring dead at the camera with yeah, yeah. dead Debbie Reynolds. Oh my God. Redone this Spoiler. scene so many times. Oh, Spoiler. Sorry. Ah. I'm saving you the burden of having to watch that long, boring film. No, but it's so weird. <laughs> That movie's fascinatingly weird. Well, and Debbie Reynolds is like, she's dressed like a little Shirley Temple the whole time, but she's an adult. It's really weird. <laughs> really very odd. The, the deterioration of high society women, they always shoot it the same way and it always kind of enters this genre. And I love that it created this whole new work, like line of work for older actresses, especially mm. in the 60s. Oh yeah. Like Tallulah Bankhead, everyone did one at that point. <laughs> like 70, like 1970, everyone had done one. Oh yeah, the big cube and the anniversary. Or um, the one that inspired Looped with um, to the bankhead and Stephanie Powers. Oh yeah, die die my darling. Oh yes, <laughs> I'll add them to my list. <laughs> You'll love it. Old ladies terrorizing people or each other. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? My absolute favorite would probably be Straight Jacket because it's such oh, a fucking mess. I fucking love Straight Jacket. <laughs> That would creep me out. Dressed up like a murdering Mildred Pierce. Oh my god. Oh god. The mask. <laughs> that really freaked me out. It was yeah. like they had such a great ending and like she went and changed it last minute so that she could be in it. Yeah. Oh no, but I have to be in every scene. Oh Everyone wants me. Everyone wants to see me. <laughs> There's a lot of Mommy Dearest in this movie. Oh yeah. She was definitely more abusive in Mommy Dearest. Well, you know, Norman yeah, Desmond's sure. really rather mild. She just wants attention. Right. Until she murders him, of course. Right. Um, but, you know, before that, she's like, I just want to buy you stuff and fuck you. Come on. We, I mean, My monkey died. So is it, I mean, can we talk about the fucking monkey died? Oh, my God. Her monkey lover. Oh. Apparently when they were filming the monkey funeral scene, everyone was like, well, what do we, like, what do we do? How do we do this? Whatever. And Billy Wilder was like, you know, just like a, like a monkey funeral. It's fine, you know, just like, you know, like just a like, monkey like, funeral. It's a perfectly normal thing, yeah. yeah. Organic. <laughs> the little baby coffin. It was so much. How many monkeys do we think are in her yard? Or bodies of young hot men? I mean... There's got to be bodies, right? There's got to There's be bodies. bodies in that house. This movie could have gone two different ways. You know, it could have been, oh, and then we discovered all the bodies, this has been happening, it's in right. the cellar, whatever. Or the other route of... Like they get married or something, and she's gonna be his the fourth husband, and now he's doomed. And you know, mm, and yeah, that's, sure. that easily could have been the ending. I'm yeah. glad it's not. Right. Like the way it was coded, it seemed more like she will find a hot guy to like lure in, and then they get the hell out of there. Yeah. The second it gets weird. Right, but he stayed because he was so desperate. I yeah, guess. exactly. He was gonna leave, and she just couldn't handle it. I know, right? It's like misery, you know. It is. Except she doesn't cobble him. She just murders him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more effective <laughs> it's also like a little psycho e mm-hmm. or vice versa i guess but yeah because psycho came out after yes is norma desmond norman bates's <sighs> mom is she the body in the hotel the revelations that we are coming to she did I say oh, she had a beach house in malibu she didn't oh, say i'll just give you about... my beach house in malibu yeah, oh, yeah. just open it up you can have the whole ocean. i wanted to see it i know I was like, oh, great, let's open up that beach house. Let's go see it. That let's go been for amazing. a swim, have them walk out of the ocean. Let's go find, like, Cary Grant and Ralph Bellamy, you know, like, maybe fucking in their bungalow. <laughs> sure. Let's Down do it. Down Malibu. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. It's just the way they wrote their di- Joe's dialogue about Norma Desmond, because, like, a lot of stuff he's talking about and a lot of stuff she brings up, she sounds like a fairly successful, well-off woman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like she's got real estate. She's got a beach house. Yeah. Like, Oh, mansion. she's properly managed. Financially like, sound. Yeah. Exactly. That's she just what wants was, to work. That's what made her the most sympathetic. It wasn't, like, Great Gardens, where it was like, now there's just nothing and everything is decrepit and, like... Yeah clinging to the last vestiges yeah. she's like well i could live here forever and like i got as much money as i want but like i want to be on screen i need yeah. to be i need to be seen mm-hmm. to give to the people what they want exactly that's um, why max is a true villain all he had to do was dust and no one would have said anything exactly <laughs> Which is like, oh, she's living in his house. why wasn't she having more parties i know i was kind of sad i mean obviously the party needs to be empty for reasons you know the new year's eve party but i was like oh i want I want to see the party. Oh, know? yeah. Buster Keaton in the corner getting drunk, you know, or whatever. Oh, right? it would have been so good. Yeah. Well, because apparently the idea for this movie came about where Billy Wilder was at a party and there was like this old man sort of in the corner drinking and everyone was like, uh, you know, kind of just casting him aside. And it was D.W. Griffith and no one cared. And everyone was like, fuck him. It doesn't even matter. And he was like, whoa. <laughs> like, they really don't. 
If you're not making hits, you're out. And, yeah, fickle. You know, fuck you. You would think that in this kind of scenario, that like, someone who's fabulous is going to be fabulous, whether they're old or not. And if they have a bunch of money and they can still be... Like, what made her just shut down? It was Max. Mm. Yeah, well, she could put on a one-woman show and finance it herself. Yeah, why not? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I yeah. love our queer lens on this, because only we would be defending Norma Desmond. I know. <laughs> Every other Joe. news outlet is always just like, fuck her. She's, She's crazy. crazy. <laughs> She's that crazy old lady in the house. Yeah. And she like, killed him. She's a murderer. We're like, yes, you fabulous. <laughs> Work, girl. Yes. <laughs> Work please. those lashes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised there wasn't like a... Uh, sort of crossfade of and this was what the house used to look like and then ooh, ooh, now yeah. it's you know dusted from the glory days the pool's empty oh, and... that would be fabulous like a mm-hmm. nice transition shot mm-hmm. 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 I mean, also would have liked if it was like he brought life into the house again you yeah. know kind of thing right where it's like let's clean it up let's and restore it invite people over exactly but he was so depressed the whole time well right they were just depressed together she needed to find a different boy she needs to start fucking Betty sure <laughs> oh that would be good <laughs> That would be on brand for Gloria Swanson, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good. Is there anything else we want to talk about not about this movie? Are you excited about RuPaul's Drag Race Season 11? Um, actually, I am because I have worked with or know most of the girls in the cast. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. It's one of the first moments where I can actually say that. It'd be so weird if someone did Norma Desmond now in this season. That would be weird. That would be really weird. Yeah. I'd love it. I mean, it's great. I'm loving this. I That's was thinking good. that Tammy Brown would do a really good Norma Desmond. Oh, I bet she would. That'd be good. Can you set the scene for me? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who is this hungry Hannah? What's her motivation? <laughs> Yeah, that definitely has to happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're excited too. We're a little like, oh, back to back to back to back seasons. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, minute. if anything, I'm just a little exhausted by it. Exactly. It's, it's like true. a Marvel superhero franchise at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yes. Just, <laughs> just give us a little break. So then when it comes, ooh, exactly. something exciting. Exactly. Yeah, how do you feel about Miss Vanjie getting brought back after being eliminated first? And I love it. Uh, Vanjie is one of the sweetest girls we'll ever freaking meet. And sure. she is so like about her business. That's what mm-hmm. I like about her most. Like, you talk to her, like, she could tell you how to basically do your taxes. She's so business oriented. That's awesome. I like that. Like, I remember I talked to her briefly after, like, I had gotten the news of, like, where she had placed, because, of course, we all gossip. And I talked to her and tried giving her, like, my whole spiel of, sure. like, how you do it. Right. And she already had a plan. Oh, no, I know oh. what I mean. She was already set. <laughs> she didn't need any kind of pointers. She's like, oh, no, I got this. Do you guys have, like, a group chat? That's a fun thing. Like, when it's a season, we usually will have, like, a Facebook group chat going okay. on that slowly fades into a Norma Desmond obscurity oh. as seasons go on. Fades <laughs> With away. Charlie Hyde's typing away a me here and there. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank Again, it's Always such so a, fun to yeah, see you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Ah, thank you both for having me. I'm so glad to be one of the bitches. Oh, oh yes. Gosh. What should everyone tune in to you for? Oh, well, you can always find me at my YouTube channel, James Mansfield. That's James with a Y. And, you know, just, you know, don't get caught up after you catch, type in James. It always puts James Young in first, whoever that guy is. Yeah. It's spelled the same way? Yes. That's I don't so know who good. she thinks she is. <laughs> It's my name. Well, thank you so much for being our first guest. Yes. yes. Can't wait to have you again, and we'll talk about some other fabulous old Hollywood things. Yeah, I love it's it. so fun to talk to you about it. You're our first guest, so it's very exciting. Yeah, exactly. It's sickening. I try to make being first my thing. Oh, uh-huh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stay on brand, guys. <laughs>